Welcome to CAT Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be doing practice problem 3.1. Now the question says, find the node voltages for this circuit. Now, as the question clearly states, you have to find the node voltages. So the first step would be to identify the nodes. So let me just quickly highlight the nodes. So we have that node there. That is one node, that is another node. And at the bottom here, all of this is one node. Now, the method which we're going to use here is called nodal analysis, which is a new method of solving just about the same problems which we've been solving before. So we're just progressing in our second analysis. This is all that you know, but using a different method. So let's name the nodes. This, let's let's call it uh, V1. Let's call this one V2. As we're dealing with node voltages, that's why I use the variable V. And here at the bottom, what you have to know is potential difference or voltage. Potential difference was named to be potential difference, or it is said to be potential difference because it is, it is the difference between two points that point and that point. The top part represents a, a certain value and the bottom can be called a reference. So you can assume this to be zero volts right here at the bottom, but you can always swap it around. But the best thing to do would be to say the bottom node is the reference node of zero volts. So all of this is zero volts. You can take this to be the reference or the ground which is usually represented by something like that, or this. So now in your calculations, whatever we get at the top, you can simply, simply say V minus ground, which is V minus zero. So you can just say V, right? So let's continue to solve the problem. So here's how we solve a nodal analysis problem. Let's start with V1. Now, if you look at V1, it's here. What we what we did before was simply add the currents at the node and sum them or equate them to zero. That is basically what nodal analysis is still about. So at each node, you are going to look at all the directions which are associated with that node or all the points which exit or come into that node. So the number of terms which you have for each node, so let's start node one or node V1. The number of terms which you're going to have have to be equal or proportional to the exit points or the entrance points to the node. So here we have one, two, three. So we expect to have three terms equated to zero, right? And here we also have one, two, three, we also expect three terms. Let's start with node V1. Starting with V1, let's look at the equation. So we have one. So first, here's, here's the first thing which you have to do. So you have to decide that, I'm gonna decide that current, so we're dealing with currents, basically. I'm gonna decide that currents which go into the node are negative, and those that go out of the node are positive. Now you have to be consistent with this conversion convention, sorry. So you always have to use this and be consistent with it. Now, if you look, the currents which go here and there are not exactly labeled. So you can choose to have them go in or out. That's totally up to you, but I prefer having them go out. So let's start. So this one ampere is going into that node. So I'm going to say it's negative because I chose in as negative. So negative one, now forming the node equation, negative one. And then I said, I want this current here to, to be out or to go out of the node. Since we know from Ohm's law that V is equals to IR, to find I, which is the current which goes through there, we have to say I is equal to V divided by R. Now the voltage between that point and that point is V1. So using this formula here, 
we're going to say the, the current through there is V1 divided by the resistor value of 2. So now, since we chose that it goes out, so we're going to say plus V1 over 2, which is the resistor value. And then now, the final term of the equation here. So all along here, we said V1, this is equivalent to V1, this is equivalent to V1 minus zero because it's potential difference between two points. So between that point and that point, as we said, this is zero volts. So now we're dealing with that point and that point or that node and that node. Since we have a definite value, which we do not know at the other side, here's what we do. So I said, this is also going to be going out. So plus V1 and then the difference between V1 and the other node is V1 minus V2, which is the voltage between these two points, which is the voltage across the six ohms. So V1 minus V2, and then we divide just like that, we divide by the resistor value of six. Then we equate all of that to zero. So this is our first equation. Moving on to the second equation, which is formed at node v2 or node 2 right so here at this point we can start here also saying that should go out let's say v2 minus v1 divided by 6 that's for the current which will go out of that node that side and here let's say v2 minus 0 divided by 7 which is the resistor value and finally we have four amperes going out. We said out is positive. So we're going to say plus four equals to zero. So we have two variables, V1 and V2, and two equations. So we can simply solve using any method, substitution, or yeah. So let's, let's continue solving the problem. So just to simplify this equation here, I'm going to multiply through by six. So we're going to have negative six, negative six, plus 3v1 plus v1 minus v2 is equal to 0. Then simplifying what we have here, we have this, which will amount to 4v1, negative v2 equals to 6, all right? And on this side, we can multiply by um, 6 times 7, which is 42. So, Multiplying by that, we have 7v2 plus 6v2 plus um, 42 multiplied by 4, which is equals to 0. So multiplying through, we have 7v2 negative 7v1 plus 6v2, and this should give you... 168 because 40 times 4 never mind 40 times 4 is 160 and then 2 times 4 is 8 so adding that up 168 simply yeah so adding this up we have that so we have 13 v2 negative 7 v1 equals to negative 168 so here's what we can do. Here's what we can do to solve the problem. We can say, um, we can take V2 that side, so V2, and take six back to that side. So it goes to four V1, negative six. Just rearranging all of this to have some, some expression for V2. You can use whichever method, but this is just the method which I'm gonna use. So we're gonna say V2 is equals to that. Now we're going to substitute this V2 here into there, right? So at this point where we have V2, we're going to substitute 4V1 minus 6. So 4V1 minus 6, and say negative, and that, and everything else stays the same, right? So we're going to multiply through in the equation, and we're going to have, so 13 times 4, and 13 multiplied by that. So 13 times 4 is 52. We're going to have 52 V1. And 13 times 6 is 78, negative 78. 
and then we're going to have negative 7v1 equals to negative 168. And now we group the terms, we have that in that, so we're going to have uh, 45, you know, 45v1 equals to taking the 78 to that side, we have negative 90, right? And then now, finally dividing both sides by 45 to find v1. So that cancels out, and we have v1 is equal to negative 2 volts. Now that we have v1, we can substitute it back into that expression for v2. So v2, v2 is equal to 4 v1 minus 6. Substituting the v1, which we got of negative 2 volts into here, we have v2 is equal to 4 multiplied by negative 2 volts and minus 6. So v2 is, this is minus 8 minus 6, which is minus 14 volts. And we have basically solved the problem. We found the two node voltages, V1 and V2, which are negative 14 for V2 and negative 2 for V1. So now, if you want to verify that your answers are indeed correct, you can substitute the answers in here. And if it amounts to zero, then your answers are basically correct. And that's if your, your expression or your equations are correct. So if you substitute the answers which you got into any of the equations, this one or that one, you should get zero as your answer. And that's how you verify if it's correct.